Hey guys, Josh here from madcharcoal.com. Here's the reference I'll be using today, right there on my iPad, whoops, that reference there. And um, this is an old scrap that I found on the studio floor. Um, it's a good drawing paper, it's 14 by 17 Strathmore drawing paper with the charcoal drawing already on it. Um, it's a piece that I didn't like at all. I just kind of threw it on the ground and gave up on it. But I think it will be a really cool opportunity to be able to use it and to uh, recycle it in a way and use whatever's the tones and the and the material that's already on there to carve out a new drawing. So let's get into it. I have a kneaded eraser. I'll talk about each material that I use once I grab it and I start using it. I'm gonna loosely base the drawing off of that reference. Not exactly the reference, but it's just something that I can use to um, develop the angles and the characteristics of the face that I can utilize. So I'm just erasing some of these tones to start making a face. I don't, I have no idea what reference I used or if I even used the reference for the actual original drawing underneath this, but it's okay, that doesn't matter anymore. But now I have a lot of material that's put down that I can kind of warp around and, um, and alter to make a new drawing. There's something really intimidating and really tough about working on a blank piece of paper and from a straight, clean piece of paper, putting material on there, that will make it really difficult to kind of get started and get an established drawing off of it. Um, this kind of helps you with that. It's already a used paper, right? It's already a, a used piece that you can kind of add on to, kind of start to sculpt. Because ultimately, on a clean piece of paper, you're sculpting with a brand new like brick of marble, right? Instead of like one that's already broken that you can work around, that you can kind of have a direction of already. It might limit you in some ways, but it can also help you in terms of um, giving you kind of a direction to head to already. This, what I'm using here is uh, just a piece of compressed charcoal. It's a general's charcoal, a large piece, the extra large pieces. And this is, I think it feels like a two or four B. Um, Although I don't think it matters too much, you just kind of got to feel it once you start working with it, how soft it is and kind of work with it um, accordingly. <clears throat> so I'd say don't throw away your drawings. If they're drawings that you don't really like, okay, whatever, just try to make something else on them. It'll be a fun project, and it might give a new um, character and life to your old drawing with the new drawing on top of it. Back to the kneaded eraser. Just kind of pulling out some of those highlights and some of those um, lights where the light source is hitting. The Artist, um, try not to erase too white. Try to keep it those sensitive midtones. I like to squint while I'm looking at my reference. It should the reference should be linked in the bio as well. I mean, not the bio, but the caption. What is that called? Not a caption. Description. There you go. YouTube, right? I'm still learning the YouTube ways. I'm more familiar with TikTok and Instagram, but I like YouTube too. This whole part of the face here in the reference is kind of covered, so I leave. So I'm gonna erase that out, and I'll make something creative out of that or later. This can all be done with uh, different types of material if you choose to do so, but I find the most efficient is just a piece of charcoal and a kneaded eraser and something to blend with if you don't want to blend with your hands. Blending with your hands is useful because they're always there, but um, you can leave the oils of your fingers on the drawing, which might not be good in some situations. Or um, it's, not, it's also not as... Uh, 
effective for details since your finger is pretty round and not sharp at the end for the details to kind of pick those fine areas up. Cool, we're starting to get a form of the face. Use a charcoal pencil, Pacific Arc, soft charcoal pencil. You can use whatever charcoal pencil you like, but I'm gonna start to establish these um, large shapes and shadows and kind of make more marks of where everything goes. Shadows. I'm gonna come back and blend these so I'm not worried about the lines all that much. But I am worried about the values and how dark and light things are. It's better to have the drawing look accurate from a distance and close up because if you have the details looking very realistic and very accurate up here when you're close and then you kind of move back and you realize that the eye is actually like a couple millimeters to the left instead of right where it's supposed to be, no matter how detailed that is, it's gonna look off and it's gonna look weird. So make sure you're more accurate with the large shapes and the large parts of the drawing um, before, the sm before you worry about the smaller ones. If you're overall pretty accurate with your drawing, even if it's not detailed at all, it's gonna read a lot nicer than if something's super detailed and really inaccurate. inaccurate. Keep that in mind. What I'm doing for proportions is that I'm kind of, in my mind, checking lines, vertical and horizontal, where everything lines up. So I know that this shadow kind of stops to where the left end of the nostril kind of stops, and is also the place where the tear duct is for this left, or their right, our left eye here. So now that I know that all those things are in line um, pretty accurately, I can see that this is a, like a angle right here that kind of follows with all these points as well, outside of the mouth, outside of the nostril, um, and then the edge of the eyebrow here, all that as well. Small things like that make a huge difference in the drawing. That way you can start working with the smaller details like this is the bottom eyelid and it's kind of catching some light there. So we'll leave that. And then we have the top eyelid which is catching a lot more light and I kind of went away with it. So let's bring it back in a little bit. There we are. Now if I'm squinting, I see that some of these areas are a little bit too dark compared to what they should be. So I'm pulling out some more. I'm doing a lot of the drawing in this drawing with the kneaded eraser since there's a lot of material that's already down. Manipulating that material is going to be the key to this drawing. Since it was intended for another drawing previously, now I just gotta push it around. A dirty old kneaded eraser is also um, useful for blending, although you will get a lighter blend than it would be with like a blending stump or something along those lines, which will make it darker or a more medium blend. <clears throat> We're losing some of this light 
sitting here in this um, the bone of the eye so socket. Sock it. Okay, just learn how to speak. Just catch those details, those highlights here. It looks really nice. Gives a little bit of life. I, I would argue that you don't even need to have like very accurate dark values, more so since the eyes natural, naturally focuses on the area where the light is hitting, making sure that you have accurate values in the light areas of the drawing are key to making the drawing look realistic. You could even have the actual shadow shapes be really um, abstract and um, and crazy, like, like this, with some crazy lines. It won't matter all that much because our eye, our human eye is naturally drawn to the places of the of where the light's hitting. And if those are accurate, it'll give it a nice balance. Now, if you're really accurate in the shadows and not accurate in the light, it's gonna look off. It's gonna look unbalanced. It's gonna look confusing and it's gonna look uninteresting. Keep that in mind while you work. I'm also not so worried about the things on the outside of the drawing, leaving those open-ended for the creative person to be able to, or the viewer to be able to creatively um, interact with the drawing. If you're if you're making the decisions on what the way everything looks in the entire drawing, then there's no room for the viewer to apply themselves to the work. That's why I leave mine nice and open-ended in some ways. That way the viewer can be more involved in what they feel, see, interact, and experience in, in the work. I just want to give them some guidance, which is this realistic area, or more real realism type area. Um, that's the guidance that I allow them to have, or I kind of hand them the viewer. And the rest of it is up to them. Now let's see if we can take, uh, I'm going to take this piece of uh, foam here, dip it in this pan pastel, it's black pan pastel, the, ba the pastel merges really well with, um, with the charcoal. So I'm going to take this, and since we don't have that much information here, I think it'd be really nice if we kind of pull that down and kind of create a, uh, almost like a drip slash pulling down effect here. like a melting effect almost through the drawing. That way it gets a little more creative, a little bit more interactive and a little bit off. Not just realism, but we've got a lot of mid tones and darks there, but we don't have much many light tones. I'm going to pull out wherever we have these like light tones in the drawing and kind of continue that down. Maybe there as well. Looks like some light's supposed to be hitting there. So we'll kind of pull that down. All right, we're getting a nice interaction. I don't think it's very detailed, which is okay. But I do think that enough of it is reading so that we kind of know and understand what's going on in the drawing. Maybe not theoretically, but physically we do. And um, we also have a balance of chaos in order, and we have the character of the drawing from beforehand showing through with those lines, which can't be erased because they're hard in there. Looks like they were put in by a pencil or something. I really don't remember doing the last drawing that's underneath this, but it's showing through and there's nothing I could do about it, but I think it's something that's um, beautiful that we can kind of work with and, and allow come through in the finished drawing. So this is the way I'm gonna keep the drawing. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you got something out of this. Let me know what you guys would like to see next. Um, 
and I will see you guys in the next video. You guys are the best. See ya.